Hey, what's up everyone? Since it's the end of 2022, I thought it'd be a fun idea to make a video establishing my top 10 favorite albums of this year. Now keep in mind, I'm literally just some normal college student who likes music. I'm not some professional music reviewer, so I haven't listened to as much new music as you'd expect someone like Anthony Fantano to. This means I'll only be covering my top 10 and not something like my top 50. And just to be clear, this is my personal top 10, not like the objectively best albums of this year in general, so just keep that in mind while watching. A lot of good music came out this year, so before I start the list, I do want to introduce some honorable mentions. These are some very good albums that I find worthy of at least noting, but just shy of cracking the top 10. Starting with... Don FM by The Weeknd. It's pretty good, and its vibe really reminds me a whole lot of Michael Jackson. Obviously, no one can ever even come close to replicating the impact MJ had and what he did for music in general, but if we had to debate for this new generation, The Weeknd makes a completely valid argument. My favorite song off of it is Gasoline. Ramona Park Broke My Heart by Vince Staples. This one's pretty good, and I don't see it get talked about enough. The beats really match Vince's rapping, which has this really laid-back, chill vibe to it. The whole thing pays homage to Ramona Park in California, the place that he grew up in, talking about the influence it had in his upbringing. I love putting this on and just driving around doing my thing. My favorite song off of it is Paper Cuts. I found a middle and a bit of balance. Sick by Earl Sweatshirt. I think this one is a seriously solid project from front to back. There's not one track on it that I consider necessarily bad. The only thing that keeps me from placing this any higher is that I just don't find myself coming back to this one too much. I was pretty hyped during its raw in the beginning of the year, but after a week or two, the whole thing kind of flew by my head. I still think it's very good, just not long lasting as all. It didn't leave too much of an impact on me. My favorite song off of it is Tabula Rasa, if I'm pronouncing that right. Ants From Up There by Black Country New Road. I know a lot of you may have this as your record of the year, and I totally get that. This album is awesome. I praise it for being so theatrical and poetic. The only thing is, and I don't really know how to describe this, but it hasn't really clicked for me yet. This is one of those projects where I'm aware, like I know it's good. I like it, but I don't love it the way the majority of others do. I'm sure at some point in my life, I'll fully come around to it and hate that I didn't put it in any of the top 10 spots, but just for right now, I enjoy it, and that's as far as that goes. My favorite song is Basketball Shoes, and that's one of the few songs ever that has legitimately made me cry. It's so good. Milton John and Joey by Milton John and Joey. Being the group's final record before disbanding, I think this is a great one, acting as a perfect send-off to each member. This alternative post-rock album is a stunning body of work that has some genuinely amazing production. If you like people like Ween, Black Country New Road, or just any other post-rock music, I guarantee you'll love this one. My favorite song off of it is Guilty Tenants. Cheat Codes by Black Thought and Danger Mouse. One half of the roots, Black Thought, teams up with legendary producer Danger Mouse to create this really good record. Everything from the grimy eeriness of the world-building beats to the impressive performances brought by features from MF Doom, ASAP Rocky, Run the Jewels, Conway the Machine, and more, this LP gets me bumping my head on nearly every single track. This also doesn't really have anything to do with the music itself, but I do love the album cover. My favorite song off of it has to be the title track, Cheat Codes. <laughs> Motomami by Rosalia. Este es mi álbum favorito en español de este año. Bro, this album is so fire. Although I do enjoy the sadder, slower sounding songs like Candy and <clears throat> Hentai, I do prefer the more upbeat electronic instrumentals from songs like the hard hitting opener Sayoko to the title track to Diablo, and who can forget the ever so popular Biscochito. I really do like this album. I definitely do think it's worthy of a top 10 spot, but it's just so much good music came out this year. I had to bump this out of it. Lo siento. En mi opinión, la mejor canción es La Fama. Harry's House by Harry Styles. Alright, now I admit, I was never really the biggest Harry Styles fan. Like, when I first listened to his Fine Line album, I initially found it to be pretty boring for the most part, and I just never really got around to trying it out again since. I always just really thought of him as the One Direction watermelon sugar guy. But this album? This album definitely proved me otherwise. I really mess with this one. The overwhelming majority of Harry's House are just pop bangers. From the catchy chorus and late night talking to the emotional storytelling on Little Freak to the vocals on Love of My Life, his singing is just top level. I've personally gotten a lot of replay value out of this one. There are so many scenarios where you can just put it on and it just makes sense. My favorite song from it is Satellite. And for the last honorable mention, we have... 21, can you do so? 
Her Loss by Drake and 21 Savage. I was really curious to listen to this one ever since it was announced. 21 Savage and Drake combining forces to create a collab project was something I was definitely looking forward to, considering all the songs they made together up until that point had just been straight up bangers. And this did not disappoint at all. I would have liked it if 21 was more present in the songs because if we're being honest, it was more of a Drake album with 21 sprinkled in as a feature here and there, but that doesn't take away from how good the tracklist is. My favorite song is Put up B in millions. All right, everyone, now onto the official list. If I don't mention an album you love, then I, I'm not sorry. Here are my top 10 albums of 2022, starting with... Metro Boomin wants some mud, nigga. I'll tweak it. Number 10, Heroes and Villains by Metro Boomin. I see people saying this is what DJ Khaled thinks he can do, and that couldn't just be more facts. If this came out earlier in the year, I feel like it would have been such a better nomination for Rap Album of the Year over God Did, man. That was such a horrible choice. Anyways, I love this album. Metro Boomin is back at it again with his astonishing production. Collecting rappers like they're Infinity Stones, bringing them together to make this unearthly experience of a record. The rollout was so fun too. I love all the artwork made for each collaborator on this project, and even the short film Metro put out with Lakeith Stanfield? Almost every track here is a bop. And despite Travis not having dropped music in a hot minute, I can't even lie, I've been eating good with his features recently, this one being no exception. I love everyone on here, from The Weeknd to Future, Young Th Free Young Thug, Free Gunna, 21, ASAP Rocky, Morgan Freeman? It's honestly pretty hard to choose right now, but I'm gonna have to say my favorite song is Feel the Fire, and I would rank this album 8 vinyl records out of 10. Number 9, Love for Rent by Smino. Smino returns with one of the most infectious albums of 2022 in my opinion. When he dropped 90 Proof as a single, I instantly knew this album was going to be a great one, and surely enough, I was right. I can't get enough of this one. I just want to keep coming back to it. I love his catchy voice on both the uppy and slower cuts. I especially like his layered ad-libs when he cries and shouts in the background. From front to back, this LP is amazing, and it was super well made. It just goes to prove how talented Smino truly is. It's tied with Olas Kendrick, but my favorite song is Curtains. But if the end of Pro Freak was extended into a full song, that would honestly be my favorite song of the year. I'm not lying, guys. It's so good. Go listen to that last minute and a half of Pro Freak, please! 8 out of 10 album. Number 8, Crash by Charlie XCX. On this one, she takes a slight left turn from her typical abrasive bubblegum hyperpop sound to a more mellow pop one. Some have called this album less interesting or milder than her other stuff, and I do agree it's not her best work, because her Charlie album in 2019 is arguably my favorite pop album ever in general, here's a picture of me buying the vinyl, but this one is nowhere near tame or boring. I love every song in its own special way, and even the deluxe version that followed a week after its release made it stand out even more to me. I do want to make it clear that I absolutely love her music, and she's one of my favorite pop artists ever. Although I'm a straight male, sometimes you just gotta feel like a girl boss, you know what I'm saying? My favorite song is Baby, and I give Crash an 8 out of 10. On this side, this side. Number 7, God Don't Make Mistakes by Conway the Machine. This is arguably Conway's most open and vulnerable project, chronicling and very cleverly depicting some deeply personal stories from his life, including his near-death experience, depressive thoughts, and so much more. Almost every song hits me in a new way I've never felt before, and the incredible production makes the hair on my arms stand straight up, especially when I'm really listening to what he's saying. I've never really had the chance to get into Griselda's music, but with my friend Adrian recently becoming the world's biggest West Side Gun fan, I feel like I have no other option than to check out more of their music. Because if it's anything like this, I already know I'm gonna have a great time. It's tough, but I have to say my favorite song on the album has to be Wild Chapters. Overall, I give this an 8 out of 10. Number 6, SOS by SZA. I understand it's a little premature to put this album this high on my list considering it just came out this month, but it's not outlandish to say that this record is amazing. Hey, I mean, some of you guys said that Metro Boomin record was album of the year the day it dropped, so let me just have this one. I genuinely didn't think I would like it as much as I do because I thought it would be too slow for me, but after two listens, I was in awe with almost every song. I was worried SZA might fall victim to the sophomore album curse and put out something mediocre following up a grand debut LP, but this wasn't the case at all. In fact, I think I like this more than Control, which is something I don't say lightly. SOS deserves all the praise it's getting. Good for you, SZA. Live it up. My favorite song is the last one, Forgiveless, and I give this album a 8.5 out of 10. Number 5, Renaissance by Beyonce. 
At number five from the queen herself, we have Beyonce's seventh studio album, Renaissance, and in my opinion, a fantastic dance experience. Nearly every track makes me want to just get up and bust down a couple moves. I love the experimental vocals on some of the cuts. I love the loud bass on others. I love the seamless transitions between tracks. I love how every song sounds unique and different in their own special way. It doesn't get boring. Man, there aren't enough good things I can say about this album. When it first came out, I listened to it while building this Lego car set. I grew attached to the song so quickly, and her use of the phrase act one makes me believe she has more in the works so even though i'm satisfied with the music i have now i'm even more excited for the future of her catalog my favorite song on renaissance has to be i'm that girl and if i had to rank this album out of 10 horses i'd give it eight and a half number four it's almost dry by pusha t Following up his iconic Daytona record, Pusha T really outdid himself with his newest studio album, It's Almost Dry. The trackless production is split between Ye and the Pharrell Williams, which makes for a really good listen all around. From the insane instrumental on Let the Smokers Shine the Coops, to the addictive sample on Dream Into the Past, to all the features, to the holy outro of I Pray For You, this whole thing is great. Only this man can rap about the same exact thing for the past two decades of his career and still somehow make it entertaining. With flawless rapping and endless bars, Pusha T delivers some of his best work to date, making one of my favorite albums that come out this year. My favorite song off of it is Brambleton, which was actually my number one stream song of this year. I love it so much. If you stick around till the end of the video, I'll show you my Spotify rap. It's Almost Dry gets an 8.5, 32407 out of 10. Happy for me? Really? Are you happy? Number 3, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers by Kendrick Lamar. You guys already know how I feel about this project. I mean, hopefully, considering that I already made a separate video reviewing it. If you haven't watched that, which you should, then I'll give you the quick rundown. The cliff notes, if you will. I mean, you can already assume how I feel about it, considering it's at the number 3 placement, but I love it. I think as a whole body of work, it's a deep, personal, yet wonderful listen. I have mixed feelings towards a few of the picks, mainly because of the sound of them, namely Crown and Mother I Sober. On paper, they're genuinely good songs that I fully appreciate, but I just don't listen to them often. But apart from those two, I'm in love with every track. The intense theatrical opener, the ominous beat of Worldwide Steppers, the movie that is We Cry Together, Savior, Auntie Diaries, Mirror? Almost every song is a highlight. I go further in depth of each song in my album review video for it, so seriously go check that out the link for it is in the description so i went to kendrick's concert for his big steppers tour this summer and it was a surreal experience it made me appreciate the whole project even more than i already did especially father time that is definitely one of the best songs to come out this year and still my favorite off the album and seeing him and baby keen perform family ties live is like a top 10 moment in my life Jump it i bestow upon mr morale and the big steppers a 4.5 out of five stars, hooray. Number two, Melt My Eyes See Your Future by Denzel Curry. Denzel Curry's back with another great album to add to his underrated yet phenomenal catalog. With this new record of his, we see him take a turn with his music stylistically and move from a loud, abrasive rap towards a more soul, jazzy feel with some of his best and most thoughtful lyrics to date. I don't want to repeat myself from Mr. Morale, but it's true that I also went to a Denzel concert and seeing him perform this album live was such an incredible experience that only helped me like it even more than I already did. It's so refreshing to see him reinvent himself again and again, album after album, so huge props to him. Might be a bit of a hot take, but my favorite track on Mel My Eyes See Your Future has to be The Last. I rank this album a big fat 9 out of 10. A plus, you passed. And for my number one spot on this list, my favorite album of the year, and arguably my favorite album of the 2020s, it is... Nah, I'm just playing, it's... Like Lance Lassie, you can take they side, I'm a K9, straight in the pack. The Forever Story by J.I.D. <sighs> okay, everyone, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but I could legitimately talk about this album and why I love it for hours. I honestly might do a completely separate video discussing and reviewing it sometime in the near future if you all would be interested in that, so maybe be on the lookout for that. But ever since this album dropped, there actually hasn't been a single week that's gone by where I haven't listened to it. This album is absolutely perfect. It's a 10 out of 10 to me. I didn't want to jump the gun too quickly because it's still brand new, but so far, it has seriously stood the test of time and every single song hasn't fallen off yet, even a little bit. It's easily my my favorite album of the year and honestly could be one of my new favorite albums ever in general. I legitimately don't think I can give you a favorite song of mine from it. I love them all equally and to the max. I'm gonna see Jid live on his tour with Smino in a few months and I couldn't be more excited. They both dropped amazing albums this year so you already know I'm gonna turn up and have the time of my life with my friends. I can't wait for that. But anyways, that was my personal top 10 albums of this year. And just for a little extra surprise because I already mentioned it, here's my Spotify wrapped of 2022. Well, I hope you all enjoyed the video, and comment down below your favorite albums of this year. I want to see those lists. Maybe you can put me on some new music and recommend some stuff that I've never heard before, so seriously, comment what I should check out. 
And if you like this video, make sure to check out my other ones and subscribe to the channel if you'd like. I really do like talking about music, so I'm glad you like listening to me talk about it. Alright, but that's about it from me. I'll catch you on the next video. See ya.